What are the smartest ways to get our money from Singapore into Australia when we retire? How do we minimize tax? How do we structure ourselves for our retirement income? And how do we ensure we have a nice place to live when we move back to Australia to retire? Hi there, I'm Jared Brown, Australian expat financial planner here in Singapore, and I want to share with you a few simple tips and steps to take when we're looking at bringing our wealth back from offshore, meaning Singapore, wherever else it might be, back into Australia to draw down that tax-free, that tax-efficient retirement income for our later years. We get asked this question a lot. Uh, quite often, it's uh, expats accumulating shares in their employer. Uh, it might be other investment plans or offshore retirement plans whatever it might be. And the question is, well, what do I do with this money when I go back to Australia? Because I don't want to get hit with these large tax bills, an understandable concern. So there are four vehicles or four different options we can consider. And quite often a combination of all four is what makes the most sense. Number one is the primary residence. Where are you going to live? Are we going to pay down debt on an existing property? Are we going to buy something? Are we going to put in a deposit and take out a small loan to fund that property? But given it's going to our main residence, we don't have any tax liability on that money going in. The primary residence grows, capital gains tax-free, and of course we're, in most cases, not going to be renting out that property or a portion of, so therefore that allows us to clear out debt and reduce that cost in our later years. So that's number one. Number two is superannuation. Superannuation is Australia's retirement scheme. It is arguably one of the most tax efficient uh, vehicles or structures we have to draw down a tax free retirement income for our later years. But there are caps and that's where it gets a little bit tricky. There are caps on how much we can have in it tax free and there are caps on how much we can contribute into our super fund. But it does allow us to get a reasonable chunk of money in there relatively quickly. For example, if we've got partner A, partner B, husband and wife, moving back from Singapore to Australia, we can contribute $110,000 per financial year. That's one July to 30 June. And we can also bring forward the next two years into this year. So if we're sitting here, the time of recording, it's February, 2024, I could make a, contribu a contribution of $110,000 into my wife and my super fund on the 30th of June. And on July 1, I could do $330,000 each, which allows us to get $880,000 into our super in the space of a week. So we can get money in relatively quickly, but of course that means we can't contribute anything for the next two years on a non-concessional basis. So if we've got a few years to plan contributions to super, we might be able to get one to $2 million in uh, into our super fund to provide that tax-free strategy. The next option we have to consider is what is known as an insurance bond or an insurance linked investment policy, sometimes called an investment bond. Now this allows you to roll cash or equities or investments into a life insurance policy and under the Australian tax rules, in some cases, once these have been held for a period of 10 years, you can start drawing down a tax exempt, effectively tax free income from that portfolio. Again, there are T's and C's to be aware of with these structures. They're not all the same. So of course, always do your own due diligence and research, but that can provide a sensible structure for many if we can't get enough of our wealth into our super fund. Number four is simple direct investments that basically generate an income below the tax-free threshold in Australia. Now the tax-free threshold often sits between about 18 and $19,000. So let's call it 19,000 to keep the maths nice and simple. So again, if we have myself and my wife, we go back to Australia and retire, we've got $19,000 each that we can each earn each financial year tax-free. <clears throat> Multiply that by two, that's $38,000. So if we assume about a 4% rate of return on our investments, on our cash, on a fairly conservative basis, that means we can have about a million dollars 
in a portfolio of dividend paying shares that would allow us to draw down that $38,000 to $40,000 on a tax free basis. So what do we end up with following that sort of rough structure? A fully paid off home, super providing a tax free income, an insurance bond providing a tax free income, and of course a diversified investment portfolio providing also a tax free income up to that threshold. So with a bit of planning, we can structure ourselves for our later years, but of course we need to give it some thought before we jump on that plane and go back to Australia. So I hope that helps. Drop me a note with any questions at all, but thank you for tuning in and see you in the next one.